Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Good morning. God is good and His loyal love is everlasting. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Appreciate everyone tuning in to our Facebook Live service. We appreciate all your support. You know who you are. We certainly appreciate that. I certainly hope you're going to get blessed today with the Word today. And certainly there's so much in the Scripture. Uh, I do my very level best to give you the, the finest of wheat. Uh, best that I can, my level best. But um, prayer is always the order of the day. We give God glory, give him praise in the mighty name of Yeshua. Let's just go before the Lord in prayer. Baruchat Adonai Eloheinu Malaka Halom. You're blessed, the Lord God, because you're sovereign. You're omnipotent, omniscient. Hallelujah. Excellent. Potente of potente. Hallelujah. We thank you for your word today that we already know it's already been sanctified glory, from your throne room. We thank you, glory to God. Use my clay tongue for your glory, Lord. Let, it, let this word just really large in the hearts of individuals. Let them be able to pass this message on to loved ones and family and friends. Glory to God that need to hear the gospel, the good news, your word, Lord, this wonderful Bible, these 66 lights. Glory to God that we have victory. Thank you for this great plan, wonderful plan of salvation you put in place 2,000 years ago for our redemption. We thank you, Father, glory to God, for the Holy Ghost. We thank you for water baptism in Yeshua's name. We thank you for speaking in another tongue that spirit gives utterance. Glory to God. We believe, hallelujah, in your, the whole Bible. Hallelujah. From Genesis to Revelation, Lord, we just thank you. And we thank you for everything that you do in our lives. Thank you for your covering and protection. Hallelujah. And covering us with your precious blood. We thank you. We praise you. Take over this mind for your glory, Lord. You get all the praise. You get all the glory. You get all the honor. In the magnificent, sovereign, wonderful, glorious name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. And let everyone say amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. We're going to be in the book of Luke today, um, chapter number four. I'm going to read a portion of God's word and uh, verses one through 14. And then I'm going to give you my, my title for today. Luke 14, one through 15. Glory to God. Here's what the Bible says. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. In those days he ate nothing, and afterwards when he had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written... Man shall not live by bread alone, by every word of God. Verse number five. Then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you in their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I will give it to whoever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. Verse number eight. Then Yeshua, Jesus answered, said to him, Get behind me, Satan. For it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Then he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge of you to keep you. This is the devil speaking. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest you dash the foot against the stone. And Yeshua answered and said to him, It has been said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now when the devil had end, ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Hmm, this was a seasonal test. In verse 14 and 15. Then Yeshua returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went out through all the surrounding regions, and he taught in the synagogues, being glorified by all. Glory to God. Again, our text comes out of Luke chapter number four, verses one through 15. My title this morning would be this, Propelled into Purpose. 
propelled into purpose. When you go back to the Old Testament, you read about Moses, Moshe, a preacher, a prophet, and righteousness. And, and he stood before the people of Israel, the Hebrews. And he looked over the sea of faces, and we're, they're saying anywhere from two and a half to three million plus people. He was now older. Forty years he spent in Egypt being raised. Forty years he was in the desert with his father-in-law, Jephro. Forty years in the wilderness. He's now 120 years old, and the lines on his face certainly bore a testament to the fact that most of those had been really difficult years. You look at yourself in the mirror to every now and then you see a, a line you didn't see maybe last year or something of that nature. Hmm. Hallelujah. He had been leading Israel for the past 40 years, four decades. And the burdens of leadership had certainly taken its toll. Elohim had supernaturally led the Israelites out of Africa, out of Egypt, out of Kemet, out of Mitzrayim, into the wilderness. But the people seemed to respond to every single miracle with another fresh complaint. My, my, my. At this particular moment, they were gathered on the plains of Moab because things were about to change, Dr. Webb. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, things were about to change, amen. The, uh, the, these complainers, the, 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 these grumblers were dead and buried in the desert sands. In their place stood a new generation, hmm. ready to claim the land Elohim had promised Abraham. Well, you know the story, they sent out spies, and Moses sent out spies, and, and two came back with a favorable report, Caleb and Joshua. Glory to God, hallelujah. Something about youth. And they said, this is, we can take this land. Glory to God, hallelujah. Hmm. But before they, they crossed the Jordan and entered into God's promises, Moses knew they needed to be reminded of how they had arrived at this moment in time. Hallelujah. As he prepared to address the people, Moses, his mind wandered back to another desert experience. Oh, glory. One that occurred, matter of fact, decades before. He, he had been on the far side of the wilderness, tending his, his father-in-law, Jethro's sheep. Amen. Glory to God. When he encountered this unusual sight that changed his life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There are some things in your life that, that, would, that you'll have an encounter that would change your life. Glory to God. Mine was August 28th, 1994. And I remember, glory to God, that, and that, that episode changed my life. And, and I remember being, being filled that week with the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. But there's certain things in your life that would just change the trajectory of your life. Hmm. Elohim had spoken from a, from a burning bush and he called Moses on a divine mission. He, he argued with God about the assignment, but in the end, he obeyed. But, but think about this. The God of glory. Mo, that, this is, will blow your mind. Out of the billions and billions and billions of people that have come on, glory to God. How, Moses having a conversation with the omnipotent one, omniscient one, the potentate of potentate, the one that has no graduation is excellency. He's Elohim. He has no beginning, no ending. He's always, he's just God. Amen. Having a conversation with the creator of the universe, that's mind blowing in itself. Glory to God. He, he, he left the wilderness and, and headed for, for Pharaoh's palace, armed with only a staff and the power of heaven. And from that point forward, Moses' life had never been the same. Oh, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Now the, the people he led were at a similar place. The children of Israel were preparing to leave the wilderness and enter the land that had been promised to them. Glory to God. I, I thank God that he's a promise keeper. 
If God has promised you something in your life, if he's spoken into your life, it might not have happened yet, but it will come to pass. He's a faithful God. He's a sovereign God. He's a loving God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he's a promise keeper. He's not a man that should lie. Glory to God. Hallelujah. As it had been for Moses, the wilderness had been a place of testing. It seems like either you're going into a test, you're in the middle of a test, or you're coming out of a test. But God has taken us from glory to glory to glory in the name of Yeshua. Unfortunately, here, an entire generation had failed the test and never made it out of the wilderness. Glory to God. Moses shook his head hmm, in disgust at that thought. Imagine that, that sh leaving Egypt, the miracle of crossing over the Red Sea. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And, and just imagine this this trip to the promised land, taking whatever, a week or 10, 14 days, a short trip, but because of their disobedience, taking 40 years, four decades, 40 years. Glory to God, hallelujah. Moses, he began to speak his words, uh, hallelujah, echoing across the desert. He reminded the people of, of the failure of their fathers and how they didn't believe God was able to deliver them. Hmm. Canaan into their hands. See, they still had that slave mentality in them. 430 years of bondage. Glory to God. They, they had given into fear. And then my dad would always say, fear, son, is nothing but false evidence appearing real. Demanding a change in leadership and a return to Egypt. They got neither. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Moses had not fully understood God's plan at the time. And you know something? This is where faith comes in. Faith is what, Sister Amy? The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Faith is the substance. It's the Bishop Queen said, it's the hypostasis. It's the superstructure. But glory to God, sometimes God, he, he makes his plan known to us at, on a need-to-know basis. And that's not easy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because if he gave you the whole plan, and you say, I got to go through that to get to here. You want to stop right there. Glory to God. But Moses had not really fully understood God's plan at the time. But now with the benefit of hindsight and the wisdom, something about wisdom, glory. In the accumulated years, Moses understood God. Here it again. Remember, my title is Propelled into Purpose. God's purpose for those wilderness wanderings. Moses said, hallelujah, there's something about wisdom. There's something about maturity. Glory to God, hallelujah, in the name of Yeshua. His word is a lamp to my feet. It's a light to my pathway. Wisdom, Lord, I acknowledge in all thy ways. Direct my path, lead me. Glory to God, on a plain path. Go before me, make every crooked space straight. There's something about wisdom. For the Bible says in the book of words, in the book of Davayim, it's, 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 it's in Hebrew, but in English it's, it's Deuteronomy. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 8, verses number 2 and 3, the Lord thy led thee for these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know. Yodim, a Hebrew word is to know. What is in thy heart? whether thou would keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee known that man doeth not live by bread only, but by every word, hallelujah, that proceeded out of the mouth of yod heh vav -Heh. That's, look at, look at the, look at the Lord and, and capitalize. It's, it's the technogrammaton, yod he vav he, live doeth man liveth. Hallelujah in the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. I, I want to pose a, a question to you. Just want to share something with you. I want to ask you, when you were younger, glory to God, hallelujah. And as you get older, amen, and, 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 and you now understand 
things now that you didn't really understand when you were maybe a child or, or you were young in your teenage year. For me, I, I, I didn't understand. Death I always had a problem with this thing called death. And I remember I would be riding my bike and, you know, I might be 12, 13 years old or 10 or 11. And, and back then you could just ride a bike and no one would bother you. And, you know, we lived in a small New England town. I'm on Plugs Pond, a round pond. And, and I ride my bike and it might be the fall season. And, and I just sit by the pond and just I ponder about life and say, why am I here? And, and, and what's going to happen to me and, you know, when, when I die and all these things, glory to God. And later on, I, I got more understanding about, about being baptized in Jesus' name and being filled with the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Mm. In our text here, Luke chapter number four, the spirit led Yeshua into the wilderness to be tempted by the adversary. And temptation, I will tell you this, is a reality for every believer. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And think about this. Think about the temptations you face on a daily basis. How they've changed you. Glory to God. I don't, you can say now, I don't do things I used to do. I'm not in some club hanging out all night. I'm, I'm not ingesting poison into my body. I'm, I'm not looking at things I shouldn't be looking at. I'm not hanging out and doing things I shouldn't be doing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory in the name of Yeshua. Hamashiach. It's good to mature. Because we're all born with this Adamic nature. Hallelujah. Your flesh is, you're always dealing with your flesh every single day. Hallelujah. And I know the Lord will help you. And I know the Lord will help me to face any type of temptation because the bible says that he always let's let's go to scripture hallelujah as bishop swansea said if it's not chapter and verse it's chatter and words first corinthians 10 says this first corinthians 10 13 says this no temptation has 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 overtaken you except such as common to man it's nothing new under the sun but God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able. Here's the conjunction. But, but, but with the temptation, we'll make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for that word, Apostle Paul. Hallelujah. And what did Yeshua do? He responded to temptation with scripture. Your Bible is your weapon. It's your arsenal. Glory to God. It's the most powerful weapon that you have. The Bible, the good old B-I-B-L-E. I say basic instruction before leaving earth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Stay with me. I'm just, I'm building the foundation. I'm just kind of putting the fence together here. Glory to God. See, one thing about the adversary, the, the devil, he's no joke. He knows scripture. I talked about last week. He's, he's no joke. He, you know, in Ezekiel, he, he was a vice regent. Glory to God, hallelujah, he, 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 knows, he knows speech, amen, he, he, he walked on the stones of fire, I talked about that last week, don't play with the adversary, he's no joke, uh, hallelujah, but he knows his time is short, hallelujah, but you look at the text here, the adversary didn't give up right away, mm -mm. with each response, Yeshua quoted scripture, glory to God in the name of Yeshua, the 66 lights, 39 in the old, 27 in the new, that's your weapon. I don't care what you're going through life. All you need to find is, is a written word. It's called logos. And then when it, it will jump off the page. We call it rhema. And then you speak it in faith. For the Bible said his word goes what? Forth and never returns back void. Hallelujah. In the name of Yeshua, God's word, it is a weapon to use to fight the adversary. The Bible says, put on the whole armor of God. In Ephesians 6, chapter number 10. But again, my title is this. Yeshua was propelled. Hallelujah. We are being propelled. All we got to do is surrender to Yeshua. That's all we have to do. Let him lead and guide us. Let him direct us. Glory. Acknowledge him. Lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all thy ways, Proverbs 3, 3 and 5, and he will direct your path. Luke chapter number 4. 
the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Ruach HaKadosh, led Yeshua into the wilderness to be tempted by the adversary. See, see Yeshua's lineage included a long line of Nabis, and, and I, it's a Hebrew word for prophets, or Nabiots, uh, in the plural sense. Prophets and preachers whose ministry had developed in the desert. Remember his cousin, John the Baptizer, also had significant time in the wilderness. I love John the Baptizer. He had one message, repent and be baptized. This is the man that ate locusts and wild honey. The wild, they called him the wild man. He, repent and be baptized. Glory to God. Mm. Glory. He was on divine assignment, preparing, hallelujah, the way. John had been in the wilderness when the word of God came to him in the name of Yeshua. In Luke 3, chapter 3, verse number 2, just for your notes. John's time in the solitude of the desert, of just nature, had been, I, I want to say, a precursor to the ministry that captured the attention of a nation and earned the displeasure of a king. It's good sometimes to be by yourself with God. It's good to have that secret place. For the Bible says in Psalms 91, 1, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. It's good to spend time with God. It's good to collectively come together in praise and worship. There's power in numbers. But it's good to spend time with God and talk to Him, speak to Him, ask Him questions, sit before Him. Let Him, let him speak to you through the power of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Glory to God in the name of Yeshua. I will say this in the name of Yeshua. Now it was now Yeshua's turn. John was preparing the way. But this wasn't some, some Airbnb. Mm -mm. Now this wasn't some weekend wilderness getaway and escape from the, uh, you want to say, the hustle and bustle of the city uh, of life. Instead, Jesus would face the fight with the adversary, glory to God, that would, that would launch the most powerful ministry, the world, ha -halom, the world, hallelujah, had ever witnessed. He, he turned temptation into triumph and in the process showed us how to do the same. He always, the Bible says this, the Apostle Paul says, he always does what? Causes us to triumph. That's good news. He always causes us to triumph. And I want to tell you this, glory to God, being filled with the Holy Ghost doesn't exempt us from experiencing temptation. Just turn on your phone. Uh, st stuff that just pops up on, on Texas. I don't know where that came from. Turn on your computer. Look at the billboards. Look at the television. It's everywhere. Glory to God. None of us are exempt from temptation. Glory to God. As New Testament believers, amen, glory to God, we have this, this, this amazing privilege of having Elohim spirit within us. The very essence of God. Think about this. The Holy Ghost. The very essence of God. Ah, hallelujah, Father, on the day of Pentecost, they're on, uh, glory to God, they're in one accord, hallelujah. The very essence of God, the Ruah HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, lives inside of us. Remember David had the Ark of the Covenant? And he, he was coming to the city, he was dancing, his wife was looking at him, she was upset because of his dancing. David didn't have the Holy Ghost, but he was praising and worshiping God. You and I that are filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, we, we, we should be praising and giving God glory every single day. The very essence of God dwells inside of you. The hope of glory. Glory to God. That way you can say with confidence, greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. What a privilege. What a privilege having the eternal spirit living inside of us. But it does not exempt us from facing daily temptation. If Yeshua, Jesus, the Son of God, faced temptation, we should prepare for us to do the same. Bishop Queen, was, he said so many things over 20 years of sitting under him. He said so many things, but he said this, settle it in your mind. Settle it in your spirit. Glory to God. The adversary, glory to God, is going to assault you 24-7 every single day of your life. Glory to God. I'm talking about when, when you're born again. Glory to God. How to, if, if you're unsaved, he just, he, he, he got you. He, he, he's just tossing you, you know, he's just doing whatever he wants. But saints of God, 
He is see, he attacks the ones that are closest to God, his children. Glory, because he can never have that, that koinonia, that relationship with God anymore. So he attacks the saints of God. But he's going to do this 24-7. And understand this. Bishop Queen says that settle in your mind until you take your last breath on this side. Hallelujah. But know that the greater one dwells inside of you in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Glory to God in the name of Yeshua. And that's shouting news. In the mighty name of Yeshua. You ought to thank God every single day he saved you. You were going down a devil's hell. Glory to God. Going down the smokestack. And he delivered you. He saved you. He rescued you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Thank you for eternity. Let me tell you something. I'll say it. I'll say it again. Eternity is too long. Don't get this thing wrong. Hallelujah. Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. Hell, Sheol, is a prepared place for unprepared people. And hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. But every day it's enlarging every single day. The jaws, the belly, the guts, it's, it's enlarging every day. People are, at this very moment, thousands of people are going into eternity lost. There's no do-overs on this. This is serious business. Glory to God in the name of Yeshua. Yeshua. Jesus, he certainly knew the dangers of temptation. He taught his followers to pray. Hallelujah. For the Bible says in Matthew chapter number 6, verse number 13, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Look at all the depravity of the world today. It's gotten so bad. Glory to God. As in the days of Lot, as in the days of Noah. That's what the, that's what, that's what the synoptic gospels talk about. We're seeing that today. Glory, even in the days of Lot, in the days of Noah, the depravity of man, with every evil, depraved thought that came in his mind, we're seeing it today. Glory to God. That's why every day you better make sure you got your call and election sure. How to, uh, you know, some preachers and pastors and te ministers, you need to be preaching about the death, burial, and resurrection, the ascension of Yeshua. He's coming back again. With every one scripture talks about his first coming, there's eight that talks about his second coming. He's coming back again. No man knows the day or the hour. But you got to keep looking up, know that your redemption draw nigh. He's coming back again. Stay light, as Sister Queen says. Stay light for the flight. Wear these garments lightly. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Deliver us from evil. Hallelujah. Deliverance from temptation and evil should be the subject to every believer. Prayer. If we never pray about temptation, we're probably not taking it very seriously. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But let me tell you something. Temptation is a reality of the believer's life. Glory to God. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Hmm. Let me tell you something. Yeah. The devil... Uh, uh, he, he, uh, as Bishop Swansea would say, it, it just re it tickles me. He, Bishop says, he says, he, he got a candy bar for you. He got a candy bar for your husband. He got a candy bar for your wife. He got a candy bar out there. But the devil is a liar. Resist the devil and he'll flee. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hmm. But it's a reality for a believer. Everyone on this globe faces temptation, including Spirit-filled, Holy Ghost, baptizing Yeshua's name believers. When, the, when Paul, the Apostle Paul, needed an illustration of the dangers of temptation, he didn't have to look any further than the story of God's original people, the children of Hebrews, the children of Israel in the wilderness. Even though they were led by God's Spirit and by the appointed prophet, the Nabi Moses, the Israelites, they still faced temptation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. They, they still had to deal with their flesh. Glory to God in the name of Yeshua. Um, everyone faces temptation. When I say that, it's the lust of the flesh. Lust of the eye and the pride of life. They didn't have the internet like we have today. They didn't have Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. No, they didn't have any of that. Glory to God. Had a glory. They didn't have anything, uh, a Hollywood blockbuster movie or they could look at or any modern amusements to lead them astray. Yet they were overthrown in the wilderness. Glory to God. Their story is recorded in the pages of Scripture as a warning to you and I. Glory to God. Paul says this. The Apostle Paul, 
says this on the wise in 1 Corinthians chapter number 10, verse number 11. Then he added, he says, Wherefore let him that thinketh that he standeth take heed lest he fall. Had it been for the grace of God, you wouldn't be here today. Thank you, Yeshua, for your blood. Thank you that you died on the tree 2,000 years ago. Hallelujah. See, his blood is different. His blood is efficacious. His blood is powerful. He said, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Thank you for your precious blood that you shed for mankind, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I know this. Glory to God. Genosko, our, our Greek word to know. I know. You ought to say this to yourself. I know. God will help me when I face every single temptation. Hallelujah. And he always causes me the triumph. The poor man cried. God heard him. What does the Bible say? He delivered him from all of his fears. Temptation is real. It's dangerous. And, and, and we're not left alone at, at its mercy. Glory to God. God is faithful. Paul told his readers this. Hallelujah. In his faithfulness, in the name of Yeshua, his mercy, God graciously provides this, this, this I like to say, an exit ramp off the highway of temptation. Glory to God. But for the Bible says this, but when you are tempted, he'll provide a, a what? A way of escape that you can endure it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If we're walking in the spirit, I'm talking about the Holy Ghost, the spirit, as Paul commanded in, in Galatians chapter number five, verse 16, just for your notes there, just you can go back to later on. The spirit will show us the way out of temptation. If you will follow its lead, the Spirit will extract us from every dangerous situation. He gives us strength to overcome and wisdom. Thank you for wisdom, Lord. Glory to God. To avoid compromising situations. Glory to God. That's why you stay away from compromising situations. Things don't look right, go the other way. Glory to God. Again, I say that the devil's got a candy bar for you. Don't let him play you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, I, I love what, what David's son said uh, in Proverbs chapter number 22. Solomon. Uh, he says it's in, it's in, in Proverbs 22 verse number 3. Glory to God. A prudent man foreseeth evil and hideth himself. But the simple pass on and are punished. In his mercy. Lord, thank you for your mercy. Hides us from evil that lurks on our path. His word is a lamp to our feet. It's a light to our pathway. In the mighty name of Yeshua Hamashiach. What did Yeshua do when he responded to temptation? He, brought, he quotes scripture. Glory to God. Even, 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 even spirit filled. I'm talking about baptizing Yeshua's name. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Speaking in tongues that the Spirit gives utterance. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, you're learning, you're speaking in a, in a language that you didn't learn in the school of higher learning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Even spiritual believers have seasons when they come face to face with challenges, with adversaries, with evil, with adversity. Such is the case in Luke chapter number four, when Yeshua endured 40 day tests. In the desert. Hallelujah. See, the number 40 is, is a number that, 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 that it's a period of testing. It's important. It's an important type of period. Case in point. Mo, remember Moses? Moses stayed on Mount Sinai for what? 40 days and 40 nights in the book of Exodus, chapter number 24, verse number 18. Hallelujah. 40 day test in the desert. His opponent was none other than the adversary, the devil, the serpent, the lawless one. Glory to God. The serpent who had successfully brought down Adam. Adam, Adam. Adam was the federal head. Glory to God. And Eve in the garden. Satan recognized that Jesus was the promised one. Glory to God. The Messiah. The Mashiach. Hallelujah. The sovereign one. The omnipotent one. Hallelujah. Very, very God and very, very man. And, uh, it doesn't have to let down its deed to become humanity. Redeemed in humanity, a fused together from the redemption of mankind's soul. The God-man, glory to God, the Son of God, hallelujah. He desperately wanted to derail Yeshua's ministry before it began. Glory to God. Last week I talked about God's redemptive plan. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. While Yeshua went on to work many, many miracles during his time on earth, he did not perform a single wonder during this desert test. 
to sojourn, hallelujah, even though the adversary, Satan, challenged him to do so. Instead, Jesus relies solely on a weapon we, we have at our disposal, hallelujah. It's a winning weapon. It's a potent weapon. It's a glorious weapon, hallelujah. It's a tremendous arsenal, glory. Money, you can't put a price on it. It's your Bible. It's God's word, glory to God, his last willing testament he's given us, hallelujah, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, the word, Hadavah Elohim, the word of God. In doing so, Yeshua gave us the perfect example of how to overcome our greatest struggles with temptation and sin. See, Satan knows scripture. Yes, he does. I'll prove it to you. Go to Psalms 91. Psalms 91, verses 11 and 12. Remember Luke? What did he say? Satan quoted Psalms 91. He said, he shall give his angels charge of thee, to keep in all thy ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Glory to God. He knows scripture. Hmm. Don't play with him. Don't play with him. See, the adversary knew what was at stake in his showdown with Yeshua. Centuries prior to this moment, he has successfully led Yeshua's earthly ancestors astray during their sojourning in the wilderness. While the Bible doesn't specifically blame Satan for leading Israel off course in their exodus from Egypt, we know he has been the enemy of God's people and God's plan since the beginning of time. Hallelujah. Hmm. We don't fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Glory to God. He, he knew God's children, the Hebrews, the Israelites, had given into temptation and forfeited God's promises. Now he hoped to tempt the Son of God in doing the same thing, as he often does today, the month of October. We're in the fourth quarter of this year. We're almost done in this year, 2022. Yeah, he's real. Satan cloaked his deceptions in reasonable sounding religious language. And at one point, quoting scripture. It's not surprising for the Apostle Paul wrote this on the wise. Hallelujah. Paul wrote this. He said this in first, second Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 14. Paul wrote, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Mm -hmm. Because Satan is the master of deception. We got to exercise spiritual discernment. And there's a word for, in Hebrew to walk. It's called halak. To walk in faith. Pistis. Or, uh, in the Greek and in, in Hebrew, it's, it's faith is enuma. Glory to God. Walk in faith and not by sight. Amen. When facing, glory to God, challenges and situations and difficult temptations. Amen. We cannot make decisions based on how you feel. Your flesh is going to get you in trouble. It's jacked up. How, how things look. How things sound. Glory to God. We got to rely on the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 4 verse number 2 indicates that Yeshua's temptation lasted the entire 40 days. Mm -hmm. He fasted in the wilderness. When Yeshua refused the glory to God to give into hunger, the adversary tried another approach. See, the enemy offered Yeshua an option of attaining power and glory without struggle. What Jesus knew would be suffering, dying on the tree, on the cross, hung between heaven and earth for you and I. Again, Jesus refused to take the bait, Satan's bait. Mm -hmm. Finally, Satan questioned Jesus' identity and challenged him to prove really was the Son of God, if he really was the Son of God. Amen. Once again, Yeshua, Jesus, refused to play that, that Satan's game. After the third round of testing, the devil finally departed from him for a season. Yeshua had won the battle, but Satan lived to fight another day. He knows his time is short. He knows his time is short. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's why it is our job, glory to God, as born-again believers, to preach and teach the gospel. 
to be biblically and doctrinally sound. Glory to God, hallelujah. It's not about naming it, claiming it, slamming it, jamming it. At the end of the day, there's so many lessons in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation that we can glean on, we can speak on, we can teach on, we can preach on. But when it's all said and done, as, as when the rubber hits the road, it's about being born again. Yeah, it's about being born again. Glory. I wish a lot more ministries were preaching about the death, burial, and resurrection of ascension. Not trying to tickle the ear with a motivational message. It's about being born on high. In the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sin. And the Bible says you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You should want it. You ought to want it. Glory to God. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Winning the victory over temptation. Today doesn't mean the devil won't try it tomorrow. Yes, he will. You got to remain on guard. Hallelujah. In the name of Yeshua. My dad would always say, say, son. I tell my kids, he say, he say, son, he always tell me this. He said, he said, always pay attention to your surroundings. He always tell me that. I just, it's just stuck with me my whole life. Amen. And I say the same thing to my kids. Amen. And they're growing up, glory to God. But the apostle Peter, who, 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 who faced his own struggles, his own temptation, later wrote, he says this in 1 Peter, chapter number 5, verses 8 and 9. This is what Peter said. He says, be sober. Be vigilant hmm. because your adversary, the devil, as, as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in faith. Uh, one definition of steadfast is to be firm. Yep. Mm -hmm. in, your, in your belief, be rooted and grounded, be firm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We must, hallelujah, in the name of Yeshua, stand strong if we want to remain victorious over the adversary. His assaults in these last days are vicious. That's why you need to read your Bible every day. Glory to God. How to get rooted and grounded in God's word every single day. Glory. Have your ammunition ready. Glory to God. In the morning when you wake up, Lord, thank you. Put it on the whole armor of God. In the middle of the day, as you're having a sandwich, Lord, say thank you for today. And before you hit, before you hit, your head hits the pillow, you, you close your eyes and say, Lord, thank you for today. Stay in, a, stay in a, a position of praise and worship, in a place of repentance, in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. In his battle against temptation, Jesus drew inspiration from Torah. Mm -hmm. He went old school. He went, yeah, he went Genesis, uh, the book of Bereshit, uh, he, Exodus, the book of Shemot, uh, Leviticus, Numbers, Bit Mabar, and, and Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is, is the book of words, Davayim. He went old school. Jesus drew information from Torah, the first five books that Moses wrote. Jesus clearly had committed large portions, certainly in the memory. He certainly knew the whole text by heart. And the words proved to be the perfect antidote to Satan's deceptions. Glory to God. When the enemy comes in like a flood, glory to God. God lifts up a standard against him. Yes, he does. It's his word in the name of Yeshua. When Satan challenged Jesus to use his supernatural, deuterous, dynamic powers to gratify his own desires, Yeshua went old school. He quoted Deuteronomy 8 and 3. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, by every word of God. Jesus, Yeshua, overcame his second temptation. The opportunity to obtain power and glory by worshiping Satan and dispensing with the suffering of the cross by quoting, again, Deuteronomy chapter number 6, verse number 13. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him only. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him. Glory to God. Cleave to him and swear by his name. His name is above every name. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that magnificent, sovereign name, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Elohim, Adonai, glory to God. Finally, when Satan challenged Jesus to prove he was the son of God by throwing himself off the pinnacle of the temple, this is what Yeshua responded with Deuteronomy. He went, again, old school, 616. He says, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Glory to God, hallelujah. Ha. We, we, we believe the author of Hebrew might have been the Apostle Paul. It's a weapon. The author of Hebrews may have had the the temptation narrative in mind when he wrote this. He said this in Hebrews chapter number 4, verse number 15. For we have not a high priest, a kohanim, a high priest, 
which cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmities. But look at the conjunction here. But in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus did not overcome temptation through some angelic intervention or some supernatural display of power. Rather, he relied on the power, the deutimus, the exousian, the dynamic power of God's word. Davayim, the word of God. Hallelujah. A resource that's available to every born again believer in moments of weakness, in moments of temptation. Glory to God. It's, it's written. It's rhema. You read it. It's, it's logos. It's written. But it's rhema when you speak it. And it's like lightning coming out of your mouth. I'll say it and I'll say it again. Listen to God's repeatables. His word goes forth and never returns back void. It will accomplish what it's supposed to accomplish. Mighty God is he. Long before, hallelujah, I'm almost done. Long before Yeshua's temptation in the wilderness. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. The psalmist had taken note of the power of God's word in resisting temptation. The Bible says in Psalms 119, verse number 11. For the Bible says this. How to, thy word I've hid in my heart. He wrote that I might not sin against thee. The New Testament writer compared God's word to a sword. He ba 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 shut out a cool. A sword noted that it's quick. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's Hebrews 4 and 12. It's quick. It's powerful. It's sharp and any two-edged sword. Oh, hallelujah. There is no greater. There is no greater weapon for use in our wilderness moments. Glory to God. Knowing and obeying the scripture is key. You got to have word. Hallelujah. In winning the victory over the adversary. It's like going to the bank. Every, every week you, you're making a deposit. You're taking your paycheck and you put it in your bank account. Glory to God. When the adversary comes in, glory to God, like a flood, you make a withdrawal. Pull out God's word. Speak God's word. No weapon formed against me, no weapon formed against my family shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of Yod, He, Vav, He. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Yeshua. Glory to God. Glory to God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Luke made it clear that Yeshua was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, but when Yeshua left, he returned in the power of the Spirit in the Galilee. And throughout his entire ordeal, Jesus had been directed by the Spirit. 40 days and 40 nights, didn't have anything to eat, amen. When we follow the leading of the Spirit, what the enemy intends for evil, Again, the Bible says, and uh, Paul says in, in Romans chapter number 8, verse number 28, he says, what the enemy intends for evil, God will turn around and work out for our good. If the Spirit leads us into the wilderness, we can be absolutely proof, positive, confident. If we continue to trust God, we'll come out victorious. Every single one of us will go through wilderness experience. We'll go through seasons of testing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I will say this. Uh, glory to God. Uh, uh, I, I, my... My, my favorable days have been more than my challenging days. And, and thank God for that. But you will go through challenging times. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Satan intended to abort God's, the Lord's ministry before it even began. Instead, this period of testing and temptation in the wilderness, what it did, it propelled. Hmm, remember my, my title, Patel, pr propelled into purpose. Propelled Yeshua into purpose of calling. When Yeshua left the desert, there went out a fame of him throughout the region round about. Before the chapter is finished, Dr. Luke wrote, new doors of ministry had opened, and Yeshua performed many, many miracles, including healing Simon Peter's mother-in-law. Glory to God, hallelujah. Ha, ba, 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 I want, to, I want you to say this to yourself. I'm going I'm to quit in a second. I got a couple of minutes. I will be led. Say it to yourself. I will be led by the Spirit, and surrender to God's call on my life. How do God know? For I know the plans that I have towards you. Jeremiah 29, 11. He has the perfect plan for our lives. Glory to God. How, how do we, I, just, I want to just leave you with this question. How do we know we're being led by the Spirit? If we are encountering opposition, that is probably a sign that we're being directed by the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Satan will always resist the person who's attempting to fulfill God's will. Glory to God. So if you're being buffeted right now, 
don't, don't be surprised. Don't find it strange. Glory to God. Keep doing what God has you to do. Our adversary will try to tempt us to take the easy road and give it to our carnal desires. Per, uh, pursue our earthly glory and protect even our egos. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But if we trust Elohim, he can turn those same tests into an advantage. Yes, he can. We can come out of the wilderness of temptation, this trial stronger than we've ever been poised to fulfill God's purpose. And sometimes God has to take you through something because guess what? It's for somebody else down the road. To witness to someone else down the road. That's the door to open for witnessing. People say, well, you don't know what I've gone through. Well, let me just share what, what God brought me through. And it's that same test. Glory to God. And it opens the door to winning souls for the kingdom. Being able to witness, hallelujah, and getting that folk saved in the name of Yeshua. Let me put some flesh and bone in this, as, as Bishop Queen would always say, as he would always quit. He said, some lessons we can learn only by weathering storms and trials of life. Mm-hmm. If we really want to be greatly used by God, we've got to allow the Spirit to lead us through trials and situations and, and tests. He knows, hallelujah, will prepare us for, for, for ministry and glory to God, what he have us to do. All of us have a part to play in ministry. Glory to God, hallelujah. And you want to do your very level best that you're pleasing God and everything. Amen. He, his desire us is to fulfill everything he has us to do. If God leads us in a challenging situation, we can rest assured, and we trust him, he's going to work it out for our good. Uh, I, I, just a show of hands, I, uh, I'm a living testimony. He'll work it out for your good. We're all going through stuff even today. But I say, I'm going to work it out for your good. How do, I don't know how he's going to work it out. How, if we, if we, if right now, we seem to be on a need to no basis. Glory to God. But he's going to work it out. Glory to God. In the end, will be greater blessings to others. Glory to God, as we witness, win souls for the kingdom. It's good to win souls for the kingdom. It pays great dividends, glory to God, and to the kingdom because of the victories we've won during this time of testing. May God bless you. May he keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. Glory to God, hallelujah. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. I want to continue to pray for you. Glory to God, hallelujah. This is the time, if you have not been born again, of the water and of the Spirit. Hallelujah. It's an altar call. This, God's plan of salvation is right here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There's something called imputed sin. Because of Adam, all born after came into this world sinners. But there's also something called an imputed righteousness. 1 Corinthians 5, 20, 2 Corinthians 5.21 Now grace, all born again believers, in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. So take God up on his bargain. Hallelujah. Take him up right now. Hallelujah. Acts 1, 1 and 8. Acts 2, 38. John 3, 3, 3 and 5. Read these scriptures. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You want to be saved, born again, reach out to us. You know how to reach us. Send us a message. We'll reach out back out to you. We'll go through scriptures with you. Glory to God. Do our very level best to find a place to get you baptized in Jesus' name and be filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. How to, and you're sealed until the day of redemption. I continue to bless you, lift you up in prayer. Church members, you know people who have supported the ministry and loved ones. Hallelujah. Let everyone repeat after me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. What I say to one, I say to all, watch, fast, and pray. And be a great witness in Yeshua's name. Amen.